Hey guys, I'm Dante Ferrigno and this is Ferrigno Freedom. Welcome back. I am still working with my wife. Actually, today is her birthday and she's been trying to do carnivore for 30 days now. But we've mostly been using the cow that I bought from Big Mo's Cattle. And I realized when I talked to her today because she's had struggles on this. She's had cravings and it's hard for her to get away from them. Plus she goes out with her mom a lot and then her mom wants to take her out to eat somewhere and it's hard for her to refuse when, especially when somebody else is buying and it's always convenient. So I was talking to her this morning and she had said that she just can't eat another burger. One, she has them cooked a little too much in my opinion, but I still understand because when I started this diet, even though I didn't overcook my burger, I couldn't stand eating burger. Now I've gotten used to it. Now I love a good burger. It took me a while to acclimate to that. And I think it had a lot to do with Big Mo's cattle and the warrior burger that they make where they take the liver and the kidneys and the heart and they grind it all up with the suet and put it in with the burger and you get a real fatty piece of meat. But today I realized I need to get some store-bought stuff for her. And this is ribeye. So ribeye is gonna be a whole lot easier. When I told her I got some ribeye, she said, heck yeah, I'll have a ribeye. So I figured I just gotta do exactly what I did when I first started, and that's make sure it's easy to eat, something that you can do. I was doing a lot of New York strip steak and a lot of ribeye. Well, not a lot of ribeye at the beginning, but I was buying a few ribeyes, especially those big tomahawks. Boy, I love those tomahawk ribeyes. But because I use an air fryer most of the time, it's kind of pointless to get tomahawks because you can't fit them in most air fryers. I can fit them in one if it's small enough, but for the most part, those tomahawks just don't fit in there. I have taken it where I take the bone off, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having a tomahawk. I like to be able to pick that thing up and take a bite out of it, you know, like a caveman. But anyway, that aside, I wanted to point out that I don't want to dissuade people from buying store-bought meat because this may be the only way that you can get started on this. This may be the key to you being able to do this. Even if it's the inexpensive meat. If you can eat it, I can't eat it because it's just like chewing on chew leather. But some people say they love it. And I say, you know what? If you love it and it's affordable for you and it's meat, go ahead and eat it because it's going to be better than the alternative. If you're eating those things that have vegetable oils and sugar and all that processed garbage in them, that's what's going to get you. So today, I'm making her a ribeye. And this being her birthday, I figured it's well worth her having the opportunity to have exactly what she would like to have. And even if she wants to have something else, I'm not going to dissuade her. And this is something I would share with anybody out there who has a partner who is considering going carnivore or sees the value in it, but isn't quite ready, doesn't have that big why in their life that says, I need to do this because if you don't have that why, it's really hard. She's mostly doing it right now because I'm encouraging her to. And I try to explain to her the benefits of not having that inflammation in your body. That inflammation is the root of most everything that causes us problems. So if you can get that inflammation out and an all meat diet, especially a good beef diet like lion diet, is gonna get rid of that inflammation and it's gonna make you feel a whole lot better. The last time I had my inflammation markers checked at the doctor, everything was as low as it could possibly be. And that's why I'm able to get up and do the things that I couldn't do before. I used to want to go walk and exercise. I used to want to be able to do things that were good for my body, but I didn't have the physical desire. I didn't have the ability to do it. And a lot of times, you know, those might be excuses, but really, it's hard to do things when you don't feel good. When you feel bad, it's easy to just sit there. It's easy to just lay there. And that's why I want to remind everybody, don't be afraid of getting any kind of meat that's going to get you on track. I don't care if it's potted meat. If that's what you can afford, get that. Because it's going to get you a lot further than this processed garbage that we've been eating that's causing us so many ills in this society right now. So I'm going to use the Dreo today because this meat just came from the store. Normally, if I'm doing frozen meat, I like to use my regular air fryer. I could probably do frozen in here. I just haven't tried it. Well, I have done it, but it's not as easy because you got to do a two-step process. And I've gotten used to enjoying the way the meat comes out of the chef maker when you just do it from room temperature like this is. 
we've had this sitting in the car for about 45 minutes on the way home because we had to stop and take care of some things this morning. I wanted to go with Katie this morning and help her with the kids getting into school. It's her day, it's her birthday, and I knew she had to go do some cleaning duties that she does at the dojo, which is one of the reasons why Levi gets all these classes and now Katie has joined her in karate. So I'm excited seeing what she's doing and I'm just glad she's still willing to participate because she doesn't have that why yet. She doesn't see it quite as well as I see it and a lot of you see it. But with some gentle coaxing and making it easy for them to do, it might be possible. But I still got to be careful because if I push too hard, and I do tend to do that, I can push her away from it. Just like anything else, when you have somebody you love and you're trying to encourage them to do good things for themselves, it's really hard. It's almost like trying to get your children to do something that you've been telling them all their life to do something that's good for them, whatever that particular thing is. And as soon as one of their friends says, hey, you should try this, all of a sudden they're on board with exactly what you were talking about. So it's just the natural struggles that you have when you have people you love. And I don't mind it. It's just, it is difficult. And I can relate to those of you who are in relationships and have families that are not getting on board with what you're doing because you want to see them healthy too. But you got to be gentle. And if they are interested, you might have to help them get there. So I'm gonna make this taste real good. I got some Redmond smoke salt. This is the chef's blend. This is one of her favorite flavors. So I'm gonna go ahead and season her steak up with some chef's blend. Redmond smoke salt is fantastic and it's been a game changer for flavor without getting any sugars or anything like that. So you can see I give the meat a decent little coating of salt. She's grown to appreciate the salt she also talks about how she likes the Soleil water. She really feels like that gives her some energy when I add a little Soleil water to a club soda. She used to be big on ginger ale, and now she doesn't mind. She actually looks forward to coming home and having some club soda with a little bit of Soleil water. She doesn't use as much as I use. She uses about an ounce where I might use two ounces in the same quantity. But hey, if it's doing the job for her, that's good enough for me. Now I gotta salt the other side. Just give it a nice little coating. I gotta be careful because I love salt and I will go overboard and I'll go overboard even for my own body sometimes because I got used to using a lot more salt when I first started doing this way of eating and now I realize that I don't need as much as I used to need. It's just something that seems to change and I've heard Dr. Chafee talk about this too that some people need it, some people don't and eventually I've also heard other people mention that they needed a lot of salt in the beginning and now they don't need as much. Well, here, almost three years into it, I'm at the point where I'm consuming about half as much salt as I used to, or even less sometimes, in what I drink, but I still use just as much on my meat as ever. All right, chef mode, beef, go down to ribeye, medium rare. She likes hers done a little more, so I'm gonna set it to medium. Oh, I gotta get the, gotta get the probe out so it can know when it's done. Make sure I got water in the top. Got to put a little water in. Make sure you put the probe in the fattest part of the meat so that it gets through to at least about the center. I put it right through the center there so that you can get it right down close to the bone. The tip will be close to the bone. And I'm going to set this on sous vide flavor. Even though sous vide flavor takes about twice as long, the steak comes out so moist and juicy and delicious, it's just amazing. We'll add a little water. Yes, she's from Detroit. That's why I have a lion's cup today. And right now it's calculating the amount of time it's gonna take to cook. It's gonna raise the temperature. It's gonna go through several cycles of heating and searing, and it really just brings the food to the perfect temperature. I don't actually have a deal with Dreo right now. I only did that with the Kickstarter, but I do have an Amazon link in the description if you're interested in looking at the Dreo Chef Maker. It's not the least expensive device in the world, but it sure makes cooking steaks easy and they come out wonderful so that you don't have to worry about overcooking or undercooking your meat, which I used to do a lot of overcooking and a little undercooking. So this has been convenient. So we're gonna let that cook and see how it comes out and we'll see what she thinks.
Meanwhile, I'm gonna make myself a little chuck eye and I got a half a pound of burger left over, so that's gonna be my first meal today. I may only eat once, too. I don't eat nearly as much as I used to. It's funny how I can get along with fewer calories than what I thought I would need, but if you watch my video from yesterday, you'll find that the calories aren't all they're cracked up to be anyway. A lot of people like to make comments about the law of thermodynamics and how calories work, but your body doesn't work that way. It doesn't work that way. It works on nutrients, and nutrients are what you need. Even if you're burning off calories, those things you see in a Bunsen burner are not the same as what's going on in your body. I truly believe that. Now, I'm no scientist, but I still have been eating this way for close to three years, and I showed you the other day, I go weeks at a time never hitting the amount of calories it says I need to hit for my amount of activity. And I often do more activity than what I even told it I was doing, especially lately. I still have tons of energy. So we'll see if this fills me up and who knows, maybe I'll eat again. But either way, I'm not worried about it. As long as I got meat to eat, I'm happy. So the chuck eye is 12 ounces and the meat is six ounces. So all together I've got, what's that, 22 ounces of meat here. That may be enough to hold me through the whole day. Oh, I'm gonna be taking my wife to the equestrian hotel tonight so she can get a night away too. We'll see how that works out because I don't plan on eating there. Although I'm gonna have a nice charcuterie platter sent to the room so that she'll have a variety of meats and cheeses that she can eat that's still carnivore for her. But I don't plan on taking part in that. So we'll see what happens. Maybe I will get a steak at the hotel tonight. I don't know. It really just depends on whether or not I'm hungry and whether or not she wants to go to the restaurant. Anyway, it's hard to plan out what you're gonna to wanna to eat later when you're not hungry. And I really, people ask me all the time, how much do you eat? I eat when I'm hungry. When I'm not hungry, I stop eating. It's that simple. I usually don't worry about weights except to tell you guys what it is. That's the only reason I bought this scale, so that I could let you guys know better roughly what I'm eating, because everybody wants to know. But if you keep it down to the simple fact that all you gotta do is eat until you're full, really eat until you're comfortably stuffed is probably the better way to put it. I know Dr. Barry used that terminology. That way you feel like you've got enough, but you're not so stuffed that you feel, oh God, I ate too much. You're gonna do great. You're gonna do great and you're gonna find, especially early on when you're trying this, that you don't need as much to eat as you thought because meat is extremely satiating. So I've got another dray of Chef Maker over here. That shouldn't take as long. I set mine up on sous vide flavor also. The Chef Maker doesn't have a setting for chuck eye, but chuck eye is a part of the ribeye and the chuck roast, the part where they separate. So I just set it to ribeye. One of the problems I usually have with warming up hamburger is the fact that it's already kind of dried out a little bit because it's been sitting there and all the moisture is gone. I have some chuck roast going in the crock pot right now, so I'm just gonna add my hamburger meat to that chuck roast, and then about the time these are done, this should be warm and ready and nice and juicy too. It's one of my favorite things about the crock pot is that it's, you just got meat ready available, and with all the fat that builds up in the bottom, it's a great way to warm up meats like this or to keep meat warm longer. Even if you take the steak out and you want to keep it warm, throw it in there on warm setting and it'll keep it nice and juicy. People will ask me, how often do you clean it out? About once every four or five days. I'll usually cook several things before I'll clean it out completely because I like to reuse the fat and the bones and all the juices and stuff that's in there for the next meat that goes in. It just makes it more delicious. All right, mine just finished. Doesn't that look good right there? I love how easy this thing is to clean too. Literally I just spray it off, wipe it out with a half a paper towel, and once it cools down just a little bit, I'll clean around the fan and the element on the inside of the chef maker, clean as a whistle. Katie's is almost ready. I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my steak. I mean, I'll, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my hamburger now. Talk about perfect timing. There, my burger is, even though it's sat in the refrigerator for a couple of days, nice and juicy and warm. And look at that, Katie's steak is done. Perfect timing. Your steak is ready. Awesome sauce. 
You want to say anything on your birthday? Hello. <laughs> Maybe about the steak? It looks delicious. There, now everything's cleaned up and we're ready to eat. Moist and juicy. Perfect. Perfect way to heat up a burger. I haven't busted out the big knife in a while. Let's see how this chuck eye looks. Just the way I like it. Perfectly medium rare. Crispy on the outside, nice and dark. And for the best part, let's see how it tastes. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. How was your steak? Delicious. Can't ask for more. Mmm. I'll tell you, a good chuck eye is hard to find unless you're getting your whole cow cut up. They're not very often seen in the store, but you can usually find them at your local butcher shop or your local meat place that spe specifies in meat only. And it's an inexpensive cut compared to the ribeye, but it is just as juicy and delicious as the ribeye. Mm. Some would say even better. Once you get in the mode of cooking meat on a regular basis, it really just becomes easy. I never would have thought it would be so easy for me to be able to do something like this. That was one of the big fears I had when I started carnivore diet, is how am I going to have food ready all the time? Between the slow cooker, the air fryer, I have found a magical combination that is just great for making it easy for families or, or just one person to be able to have meat ready all the time. A good way to reheat meat without using your microwave and drying it out even further. So, Katie would probably say more, but since she's just been working outside, <laughs> I'm just glad to hear she's enjoying the steak because it's a lot easier to eat than those burgers, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, that's it for this one, guys. We'll see you next time. Extra, could we maybe get some grease or fat?